probably many decades ago, this wrench served its owner faithfully, but was lost and turned into a piece of rusty metal. In this video, we will try to restore it and give it a second life. Before we try to turn the wheel of the wrench, we have to remove all the dirt, because it clocked the threads and it does not do any good. We thought that after cleaning, we would be able to turn the ring without using the oil. But it didn't give way, so we had to put some penetrating oil on it. After 5 minutes, we were able to make the wheel turn and thus disassemble the wrench. At first, we wanted to soak it all in acid to dissolve the rust. But that would have required an entire day of soaking and we would have wasted a lot of time. We planned to get rid of the main layer of rust in just few hours by using wire brushes. The tricky part turned out to be in the inner slot of the wrench, where we tried to reach with a fine wire brush. Fortunately, the threads are in a good condition, which means the wrench should work just fine, even though it's not easy to clean. The wheel has to be worked very carefully, because this notch on it is very easy to damage. When we were restoring the drill, the notch's metal was very soft and got damaged with every wrong movement. In the process, we found that there is a little spring inside of the wheel, which we will clean later and in the meantime, we have to work on the junction. Well, the initial cleaning of the wrench from rust is complete and the hand brushes are powerless here. We need to call for heavier artillery. We fasten the base of the wrench in a vise and begin machining. The wires on this wheel are made of very hard metal, so they can fight even very strong rust. But at the same time, especially on delicate parts, you have to be careful with this wheel, because it can scratch the soft metal. And just look, we have the inscription on the inner part of the wrench showing up. It says that it was made in Britain. Fix the adjustment wheel in a vise and choose the best method of cleaning. A circular brush would probably be too aggressive. So we use a small iron brush. Using a small wire wheel for a drill, we clean this decorative groove. Well, it already looks good, but we still have a lot of work to do. You can see some dents in the ribs of the wrench. Apparently, it wasn't used very carefully and probably was used for nailing. Before we cut the dents, we will try to hammer them back in on the anvil. Perhaps this way, they will fill in the neighboring hollows, which will be less noticeable. And that really helped! Now we need to work the hole for this wheel. Luckily, our file fits perfectly in there and effectively removes all the nicks. Now we take a small file and this allows us to work the inside surfaces. On the top end of the part, there is a bunch of big irregularities that will need to be smoothed out with a coarse grinded sandpaper. This plane alone took us over 40 minutes. It's fast on the video, but in reality it's not that easy. This corner is bigger than the next one and it is necessary to align it to this line. We take the file and start working. But it turned out that this is not the case at all. Since the wrench consists of two parts, the spout of the second part is as crooked as it was on the first. We need to fix it. It turned out pretty good. We turn the wrench to the other side, where it also needs a similar treatment, but not to the same extent. Having separated the parts for good balance, we decided to do this with sandpaper. This way the surface will be smoother than after the file treatment. 
Then we had to even out the angle at the top of the range as well. I don't understand why it's so crooked. It was made in England. Or maybe there was no high technology and even this design was considered cool. In general, we had to do a lot of manipulation to align the top of the range until we got the proportions right. Next, we looked at the sides of the range and were horrified by the large number of dents. What do you think might have caused them? The only thing that will help here is a disc sander. Because the dents are very hard. After rough machining, we take a strip of sandpaper. And level out the irregularities after the sander. A lot of metal shavings are formed during the processing. And if you take these shavings and scatter them over a candle flame, the particles get heated and fly away in the form of bright sparks. I think this is how sparkles are made. You can do the same with a matchstick by simply rolling it around in the shavings. After the secondary machining, the wrench already looked like this. Then we need to smooth the edges on the hole for the wheel by carefully fixing it in a vise and using a small file. To make the transition even smoother, we used sandpaper tape like this. Next, we decided to smooth the sides of the wrench even more, so that it is more comfortable and pleasant to grip. Up to this point, only the front and the back had not been sanded. And now, the time has come. The sandpaper on a flat surface should create the exact same perfect flatness on the wrench. It is necessary to go from coarse paper to fine paper to gradually remove all the scratches. After that, there is more delicate handwork to remove all the burrs and the defects. We almost forgot about our spring under the wheel. We soak it in phosphoric acid solution to neutralize the rust delicately. And in the meantime, we move to the wrench adjusting wheel. We put it on a chopstick and cut off the unwanted ends. This will get it all in the drill, and we use a piece of sandpaper to get into this groove here and polish it evenly. And by getting it at the right angle to the end of the cylinder, we could tweak the chamfer. If we had a lathe, such operation would be done faster, but we don't have it, so we are content with sandpaper and our own hands. Then we took a finer sandpaper and began to sand the item strictly in the vertical direction to create a special pattern of micro scratches. You won't believe it, but at the moment it's already 4 days of work on this wrench, and we will be very happy if you subscribe to the channel and thus will receive notifications of new videos we are working on. All that's left to do is to clean up the acid soaked spring. As you can see, the rust has mostly left the surface of the metal by itself, and we will mechanically remove what's left. Now we have to degrease the wrench. And everything is ready for assembling. We take this wheel, put the spring on it, and put it in its place. We put the top part in, and finally everything is ready. There are no sharp edges in the place of contact with the hand, and it is extremely pleasant to hold in your hand. We decided not to sand down the stem of the upper part of the gloss, otherwise the already faintly visible inscription would have been completely lost. The gaps between the top and the bottom seem to be fairly even and correct. This wrench is no longer rotting away somewhere in an abandoned barn, but will delight us in performing its function together with our other restored items. 
and be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the video.